Riley, guess what came today? The new cat door? No. The cat litter's not due until the 25th. Yeah, that's not it. The cat food? Ugh! It's not a thing for Oliver, it's for us. The legs to the table. No. More important. Ooh, the new Flaviar box. Yeah. Let's go. So yeah, we're super excited on our box number two. We were just as excited when we were able to pick it out because in the account they lock you out for like 90 days uh -huh. and then on the 91st day you could open it up again and we're both, I put it in my Google calendar, like, because <laughs> I wanted it as soon as possible. Yes. So. And once again, it was delivered very, very quickly. Oh yeah, like so, two days. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super excited about this. Um, same process, you choose a bottle and then you choose the pre- your tasting box. Your tasting box. Let everyone know what we got. We got the Hercules Mulligan Rum and Rye. Rum, rye whiskey, ginger, and bitters. Yeah, so, there was another bottle of something that we were thinking about getting too. Um, it was a it was a rum aged in Isla Scotch barrels. Yes. I think. And then there was a Glen Levitt that was aged in... Rum barrels. Rum barrels also. Yeah. So we were debating, and I think we just thought this was the most... This interesting. interesting one that we have, we know we cannot get around here. Right. I don't know what you would technically classify this as. 86 proof. Okay. So it's it's pretty heavy. Yeah, what's, what's it called again? H. Mulligan. H. We all have secrets that we will never tell. Some secrets are more precious than others. My secret, rum and rye. Your secret is safe with me. Oh, that's sweet of them. I'm pretty... Stoked yeah. to try this. I'm super excited. I'm just kind of looking at on the website. So it's a blended spirit. Yeah, it's interesting. Which, yeah, I mean, I've like, this might be the first time I've seen a blended spirit or I've like acknowledged a blended spirit that's, right. that's two different types of alcohol. So we just want to get into it? Yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, I, yeah, let's try it. I like the bottle. The bottle's it is, nice. It is pretty. Mm hmm. No. That was satisfying. So <laughs> that was so satisfying. So again, with this, there's no tasty note cards or information. You just get the bottle and go with it. Yep. So obviously though, in this bottle, they kind of kind of tell you right on the front, rum, what rye, is. whiskey, ginger, and bitters. And which I love all of those things. I love three out of the four <laughs> of those things. And oh. Get you up front there. Oh. Yeah, good nose. Ooh, yeah. Uh, it's definitely, there's some, you can st smell the ginger. That is amazing. Right? <laughs> that it, oh. It delivers on every single flavor it promises. Yeah. That is its own cocktail. That that all you need is a rock. One hundred percent. You you get definitely ginger get heavy. Ginger heavy. You can smell some of the bitters. Not. It's kind of almost like an Angostura bitters. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not specifically that, but it's about the closest thing I know to tell right. you what this smells like. Right. You don't really smell the rum too much. There's a little sweetness in there yeah. for sure. Um. And the rye is very faint on the nose. I think it. I think ginger is the most forward smell. Ginger and the bitters. Yeah, but the flavor is just. It's insane. Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely one of those ones where it's like a step process. Like right yeah. here's this, but then here's this, then here's yep. this. Well, I I don't know. I mean, you definitely get your ginger up front. Right, and then and I think the bitters kind of comes through next, in my opinion. See, I think everything else is pretty blended. Um, Try it again. But should we just drink this whole bottle and see how the flavor <laughs> yeah, profile yeah, goes? Is ice down here. We had ice down here. <laughs> it's in the freezer. So I believe this bottle is in the forty dollar price range. That's what they valued at. I believe. Yeah. And I think the other deciding factor on this bottle, it was the highest rated one out of the, like the twelve that was available. Yeah, it was rated really high. Mm hmm. And my, I already know I would rate this higher than what the rating on that was. 
It was like I, an eight. Was it? I thought it was like a seven two or, or something. No, it was like a seven point eight or something like that. Okay. It was. It was pretty I, high. This is this is at least an eight to me. I think. Oh yeah. So let's get this rock swirled around in here. Yeah. It's definitely. It's definitely worth having. Like, if you find this bottle, I would highly like. There'd be no reason not to buy it unless you just didn't have forty bucks. Yeah. But it's very well. It it blends very well. Because that ginger, uh huh, with that rum, it pulls the best parts of everything out. You almost get like that candy ginger kind of uh -huh. taste to it. Uh huh. And I love candy ginger. Right. Like I kind of wish, like we have candy ginger upstairs, and her and I will just eat it. Yeah. Like I kind of want that snap <laughs> the, at the, the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of want that snap at the end, but I understand why it's not in here because you got everything else blended right. in, there, which is fine. Like I'm not disappointed. My mouth is just kind of disappointed. My senses are just kind of disappointed, like right. expecting that. Because it tastes so much like candy mm -hmm. ginger. But then that bitters just kind of settles down. And rounds it out. And rounds it out. And then you can I can still kind of taste that. Like, again, it's not specifically Ang Angostura, but it's in that same realm Family. of bitters. Yeah. yeah. Is Flaviar worth it? Yes, for this one bottle. <laughs> yeah, for this. <laughs> and the packaging is just dope. Mm -hmm. It's got the barber shears. It looks like in a th well, thumbnail. Te or technically, thumb. those would be Taylor's scissors and, right. th and a thimble. If you can get this bottle, yep. definitely recommend it. Yep. We come to. Do you remember what we got? No. What did we get? We got um, the the Japanese Scotch. Whiskey's big in Japan, Volume Two. Mm -hmm. Is what we got. So again, you get another coaster, and then. These are going to be the tasting notes on here, but I think it's fun for us to just put them down and not know what we're supposed to not taste. Not know what we're supposed to be tasting because we didn't and, do that last time. And, yeah, we did. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. We did. Pretty sure we didn't. I edited it. I know. So I can safely pronounce one of these names. So we have Akashi. It's a single malt whiskey. Uh-huh. 46%. Uh-huh. Oh, this one's going to be hard. Coop. Kujiro Ryukyu? Yeah. And that's a Japanese whiskey, 40%. And uh -huh. then Ichiro's malt, a malt and grain blended Japanese whiskey at 46.5%. Yes. So we have zero experience when it comes to... We have tasted one Japanese whiskey together Okay. at Raw in Davenport. Mm, that's right. But that was like on a end of a six hour yeah. drinking, so I don't count that. Because I don't remember anything about that. Right. Single, single malt whiskey. Try this first. Why are we trying the single malt first? I don't know. Because it's A. Because it's A. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. It's an interesting smell. Yep. It's it's light. It's very light. There's, it smells very grainy. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of ethanol, but not like No, not it's like barely there. For being again, for being a forty six percent Right. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it smells much lighter than like I pretty much just get grain and ethanol yeah. in this in the smell of it. I guess if I knew more of the process of how they made these, would I be able to like understand like things that I'm else supposed to pull up? But we did zero research because right. I think that's kind of the fun of this is kind of not knowing anything about it and kind right. of going in. And to me, it's that's how I learn. It's like I learned by experiencing, by doing. I can't wait for that back end flavor to hit you. <laughs> Is it it's really fishy? It's almost like it's peated. Yeah, I get, yeah. But you don't smell that at all. I didn't expect it. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess I kind of expected it single when I read malt. single malt, but like that's not necessarily the case with single malt. I will definitely say for this being a single malt with some peat in it, this is probably the first single malt I could drink without like, yeah. Ugh, no, I don't, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> it is balanced. It is very smooth and easy to drink. You get the burn, but you don't know whether that's a smoke burn or ethanol burn, kind of. Right, there's a little sweetness up front. Yes. I can't pinpoint what type of sweetness that is. 
And then in the middle, again, I don't know if it's like a, or like a rice flavoring, like, or like a grain of some nature. Rice is a grain. I know, like rice or a grain. Like, I don't, you know, like a different type of grain. Yeah. I don't know, like... like have you ever been inside a corn crib? I don't know. I have. Okay. And that's what it smells like. Okay. Yeah. A corn crib for all of you folks. Yeah. <laughs> you don't I, I don't know. Is like corn, the corn crib is where they store all of the corn. So not like a silo? Yeah, but like that's prior to it being stripped from the cob. Oh, okay. I see. Yes. Do we want to see what the tasty notes were? Yes. But like, yeah. And that's right in the middle, then the, then the smoke comes through. Caramel, spicy, fruit, fennel, sherry, apple, apricot, vanilla, and herbs. Huh. huh. Interesting. I knew, like, there was a sweetness. I guess I wasn't picking up... I wasn't picking up any spice at all. Oh, I got... Yeah, I got the spice. Maybe like, it's not, sherry. Not, not I don't heat uh, spice, but, like, Yeah, just, I, know. I get that. Like, yeah. Maybe it's sherry that I'm not really familiar with is what I'm... Pulling oh, phenols. Out. I don't know if I've ever had sherry. We had it in that one cocktail. When okay, in but I, like I don't. Yeah. I think caramel but, would be an accurate description of the sweetness. Yeah, and I get the vanilla in the back end a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you did kind of get maybe like a little apple apricots, but that's super faint and super fast. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. I'm not, I, I like it. Yeah. I, would I drink this all the time? No, but like if we had a bottle of it, it would be enjoyed here and there. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah, I don't know how I would mix it if I would mix it. Maybe maybe it'd be good in a blood and sand. Mm, I bet, yeah. I can, okay, now that you say that, like I'm thinking like in my head, what would orange juice and the cherry? Because the orange juice and the apricot, mm-hmm. orange and apricot are very. I bet that would be really good. Yeah. It would be, I think a little drier uh-huh. than what would, when we use like the Akintoshin. Right. You know and stuff, but I think it would be, it would just be a good like. Yep. So if you, if you had to rate this whiskey on a scale of one to ten, I give it a solid seven. I think I would go higher. I think okay. I would go uh, seven point eight to eight. <laughs> she does this drive me nuts. <laughs> no, but I think I would be closer to eight. Um, yeah. Just because it is so mild that my palate can handle it. I enjoy it. That is pleasant. It is pleasant. Again, for being a having this kind of peaty finish to it a little bit yeah it's it's it would be a good like hey do you want to try your first peated scotch try this right even though it's not a scotch but yes right um, it's a single malt whiskey yes yeah. um sorry but it it is very delicate mm-hmm. almost but it could also stand up to being mixed if you were to do that it's a like you wouldn't necessarily expect those to go hand in hand having yeah. it be delicate and able to stand up to things but it does it would yeah. instead of being in a corn crib i mean it's good then too knowing kind of what they have for tasty notes and then like you know maybe if you pull like an apricot brandy and do something else with it you know kind of mm-hmm. hint at the lower um uh flavored notes to yeah, like the, sing with that you know so yeah, the secondary t- the mm-hmm. secondary flavors yeah well so far we're two for two on uh yeah the box all right, so now we're going to move to the, how do you think you pronounce this? Kujira Ryukyu? Go I with. apologize. Like, just in advance. I'll okay. let you smell it first this time. Okay. And don't tell me what you smell, but you smell and taste. And then. So this is just, it says a Japanese whiskey. That's it. Yep. And that's all the information we have on here. Oh. Oh. That smells like nail polish remover. I can tell by your voice <laughs> what you think about this. <laughs> I don't want to drink it. <laughs> it's nail polish remover with a little bit of pepper in it. This is what, mm-hmm. and it makes me terrified to drink it. For six percent less alcohol, this is going to burn forty percent more. I think. <laughs> Uh, uh, huh. We, oh. it's, it's weird. Uh, it takes you on a journey. Yeah. And the journey is an odd kind of journey. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's what I got. For me, it started off very like ethanol forward. Just mm. the smell. Pure, yeah. The acetone, the ethanol, like you're just getting straight alcohol. 
And then it gets kind of fruity in the middle. Yeah. And then it's sour. Yeah. Almost rancid sour. Almost. Not quite. In the nose, I get orange. Yeah. A citrus of some nature. I'm going to guess I'm going with orange. See, I'm going to... Like, but I, also, like, nail polish remover is definitely a big one. Yeah. And, I mean, I think it, you're also going to get into your into your dried stone fruits there, too. Um, yeah. Like apricot, maybe plum, maybe a little bit of orange or nectarine, but I think it's a little bit more deep fruit than that. It's been a while since we just tasted liquor, so kind of my palate is kind of, like, not on point like it was <laughs> three months ago. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's I mean, different. There might be a little bit of chocolate in there. Yeah. Like a dry sweetness. Yeah. Um, but like like a dark chocolate or if you hold it right here and smell, maybe a berry, sm berry smell. A little bit. I get that. Like a blackberry. Like a blackberry mm -hmm. or a currant. Like this would be, I think, like let's say we went and got, we met up with Isaac and Jen. We mm -hmm. sat down, got cocktails, and this is the first thing we had for the night. I think this would be a, a small pour, a finger of this. An aperitif. Mm -hmm. Again, this is I can't put my finger on mm -hmm. what I am smelling. Oh yeah, it's, we're gonna like as oh, soon as we flip, flip this card over. What do you okay on a scale of one to ten? What do you give this? Four. A four? I give it a five. I think with just a little on ice, just a rock, kind of mellowing out some of that. I think it would help out a lot. Maybe, but it's that sour flavor on the back of my tongue, the almost rancid, like fruit that's been left out in the sun for too long. Or if you left oh, applesauce right in your car <laughs> in the summer. All right, here we go. Maybe it's apples. Maybe that's what I'm trying to find. Toffee, jasmine, sweet, oak, vanilla, pear, brine, caramel. Brine would be the salty. And fruit. Maybe it's the I jasmine mean, that's causing that, I bet. that back end flavor. Uh, that's probably what it is. And I love jasmine teas and jasmine. Right. I could definitely now like see where they get the toffee from, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, because it is sweet and mm -hmm. it's not like a sugar sweet. Yeah. It's not a caramel sweet. I'm not getting a lot of oak on there, but no. I think pear is okay. You know, I said citrus, orange. I think that's more like the pear that I'm smelling because it yeah. definitely is fruit that I'm definitely smelling. Right. In there. Okay. So that one, not mad about it, but not thrilled about it. Right. 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 Okay. Now we have Ichiro's Malt Malt and Grain, a blended Japanese whiskey, coming in at a nice low forty six point five. Ooh. What? Why can't I retrieve what I am thinking? Like I, it's one of those tip of the tip of your tongue yeah. things. Huh. A little leather, dried fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, I would say, this is the middle. Of how ethanol it smells between the three. Yes. Tastes the most ethanol out of all three. Yes. There's a sweetness in the very beginning, uh -huh. and then it goes right away because of all mm -hmm. the ethanol. Mm -hmm. It's smoky. Yeah. This is a cigar, cigar night whiskey. Okay. Sipping, sipping whiskey with cigars. That this is this is what you want. Yeah. It's um, definitely got definitely that ashy. Mm -hmm. Kind of smell or taste the leather. A bit. Leather was what I mm -hmm. was trying to access. Do you get a little bit of the the sourness on the back end too? A little bit. So I think that this Ichiro's is the perfect combination of the first two. If you were to blend them, put them put equal parts in the glass, this is what, this is what you would end up with, and it's good. I think there's a little pepper in there. Yep. And I would say, to me, it feels more like a white pepper versus a black pepper. I agree. With, I can see that, yeah. It's not as fruity as the other two. Mm -mm. Um, it's a lot more ashy, smoky, leathery. Yeah, kind of more earthy in those all the yeah. type of realm of yeah. flavors, which is fine. Like, it does things yeah. don't need to be fruity. It's just, like you said, I think this would be great on a cigar night. Yep. You know, we're going to go out, sit at a campfire. Yeah, like, I'm in or the back, woods. Back porch. Yeah, not on a hot night, on a, like, a spring night mm -hmm. where it's still got, it's still a little bit chilly. October. Lemon zest, tropical caramel, cooked fruit, vanilla, apricot, pepper, peach, and zesty. It does not give any smoky notes, which to me is bananas. Yeah. Maybe that's just a combination of the cooked fruit yeah. with the tropical. Yeah, maybe if you grilled it. Yeah. It, it doesn't say how it cooked the fruit, so. It just says cooked fruit. 
grill or roasted would make sense. I mean, I guess once you start to smell, I can smell a little bit of uh, lemon zest. Also the apricot in it. It's it's more... Uh, I mean, guess now that I read all that, now I'm like, oh, doo -doo -doo, there it is. Yeah. But it still has that woody leather kind of like, you know, smoky yeah. taste to it. I don't know. Especially I, at the very end. Like when you take that, when you swallow and you take that last, like, you kind of clear your own palate mm -hmm. on the roof of your tongue or roof of your mouth, you know, smell it or taste it, I mm -hmm. guess. I don't know. Interesting. What's your rating? 6.5. 7. 7. 7. Oh, I thought we were linked because I am definitely at a 6.5. <laughs> so I was like, I was so excited because we matched and then we didn't match. The worst papers will be here tomorrow. Yep. I gotta find a lawyer. Mm. I know a good one. Oh, yeah? Carl J. Bush. <laughs> he will not work for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think overall, this is another successful flavor of box. Oh, for sure. One, because we will never have access to these bottles as far as I'm aware, unless we drive a hot minute. On a scale of one to 10, because Flaviar is going to ask me to write this. Yeah. What would you rate the whiskey is big in Japan volume two? And the whole concept of box or altogether? Like of all three of these liquors. 7.5. From my experience with all of them and how pleased I am with all of them, I would say 7.5. Agreed. Even though we rated, even though that's not the average of flavors that we tried. Right. I still think the experience of it, yes. the knowledge, the information, it's, you said 7.5? It's worth that rating because the experience, like you said, is worth trying them. Right. Even the two of them, I rated less than 7.5. Right. But I think they're worth trying because they're good. Yes. They're, so they're solid. Yes. And I mean, even the one that we didn't particularly like, you yeah. could definitely do something with it. Yeah. And then with the um, with the bottle. Yeah. I mean. That speaks for itself. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Well, I mean, we spoke for it for a long time. So. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely worth it. We are yes. two for two. Yep. The first time was worth it. The second time was worth it. Yep. And the first time there was one of the tasters that we weren't fond of. Same thing with this one, which is fine. Right. You're telling me you're never gonna find a whole pack that you just suddenly. Right. Stuff. You're never gonna you're never gonna walk in a liquor store, grab a bottle, and like it 100 percent of the time. That's just that not you're not familiar works. with. Right. Um. You know, if we are right, if we like it, three out of four out of every one, I think that's a win. <laughs> it's a definite win. You know. And um, I mean, and just the ability to explore a region of whiskeys that we don't really have. Yep. Much knowledge about, much less access to. Plus, like, I mean, this is definitely like a great date night, right? Yeah. Like, oh, let's just stay in tonight and try some whiskey or rums that we haven't tried, get it in, and, you know, right. have a night for it. And then you got a nice little nightcap to keep finishing up. Yeah. And I mean, I have learned some things since the first time we ordered Flaviar about their website. First of all, you can get more tasting boxes. You can order them just right. randomly. You can order bot you can order bottles. Part of the membership is if you order other things from that you get free shipping. Yeah. That's with, another benefit. When it comes with your box. No. If I ordered another bottle of something, uh -huh. I get free shipping on that bottle. Huh, interesting. That's part of the membership. That's I thought I thought that was if you chose to have it shipped with your box. Mm -mm. But um I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm yeah. pretty sure that's a part of it. So, like, trip. tomorrow, if we wanted to go pay for an extra tasting box for a date night, we could go do that. Right. And, and it's, like, $3 off the regular non-membership price. But Yeah. Um, the, the way that they curate these liquors, the way that they put the samples together is very well thought out. And yeah. they give you a lot of information. They're, they actually have a part of their website where you can log all of the liquor bottles you have tried slash owned. <laughs> So you like can do we that. Did, well, I, yeah. I started trying to do it and I got frustrated <laughs> uh, because we have too many. <laughs> yeah. But because um, they're trying to curate stuff closer to what you want and like and stuff like yeah. that, which is fine. I mean, it's, what it's also great about that website is exploring the bottles that I would love to have. <laughs> right. Call it like a grand, you know, like, right? You know, something that's twelve years aged that hasn't been released in fifteen years. So the bottle's twenty five. You know, it's like. Oh, only a grand? Right. Uh, but it's still fun to just go look. Yeah. And they redid their website, and it's a lot more user-friendly now. Yes. But, yeah. Again, highly recommend it. We do have a link in the description for uh, an affiliate, so if you do want to try it out, click on that. Support the channel. Yep. Does it cost you any extra? We just get a little sidekick bonus Yep. Um, for it. But, yeah. Like I said, this $300 for a year. 
It's definitely worth it, I think. Right. And as a reminder, that year is four tasting boxes, one every quarter. Each tasting box, you also get to choose a full-size bottle of a spirit of your choice based, or they give they, you like they give 15, you 15, uh, 15 to 10 to 15 options yeah. that you can choose from. Most of those we can't get. Yeah. So it's nice. Um, yeah, exactly. And it's a lot, it's a lot of scotches, whiskeys and rum. Yeah. They, I think they started off as a whiskey club and then they started branching out as yeah. most of them do. But the, these little samplers are a wide variety. They have like a mezcal one, an American whiskey, a Japanese whiskey, a bunch of other different things, you know? Mm -hmm. So check it out. Yep. I think the next one I want to go for more of a either a tequila or a gin. So if you guys have any questions, just let us know in the comments. Uh, we try to answer every single comment. So if you have a question about it, um, we can look at specifically at our account and mm -hmm. see if we can do or answer your question for you. Yep. So yeah, awesome guys. Well, thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you next time.